Hello launchers, this is Joshua and in today's video I'm going to teach you how to add a manual product. Now a manual product is just any product where you have to input all the product details yourself. Let me explain. First I'm going to log into my dashboard like I've done and then I'm just going to click on either create new from this left hand side navigation or from the products page we can also press add product. Now it's going to bring up this screen and the very first option is where we're going to create a manual product, basically a product from scratch. Now, other types of products we can create are print on demand products, and we can also find images to be used for print on demand products. But for today's video, let's create a product from scratch. So I'm going to press here, and this is going to take us to our product wizard page or how we create a product. And I'm going to walk you through all of these fields and talk to you about them. So let's get this rolling. The first option is the product name. This is going to be the public facing name of the product. So if you're selling shoes, you might say this is uh, called shoes that are really cool or, you know, some other name that better fits your product. Now, you do have the option of adding a additional or an optional SKU. So you can put in a SKU number here. Now, typically, this would be used for tracking inventory. But if you don't have a SKU, you can leave that blank. Now, if we go to the very right-hand side, we have some product statuses. An active product is a product that can be sold on your website and your store visitors can purchase it. A draft product is a product that is not quite completed yet and it will show up in your draft sections over here. And an inactive product could be a product that um, is completely done. However, it's inactive, which means it can't be purchased. So you need to make your selection here. If we hit active here, nothing's going to happen until we save this page. But when you do create a product from scratch, it starts off as a draft. However, once again, you must change the status to active in order for it to be publicly available on your store. Okay, as we continue down, we have our product description. So this is where we would describe the product. We would tell the people what they were buying, maybe give them a paragraph of text, give them some bullet points. You can also add additional um, formatting into this section here. On the right hand side is your categories. Now you might not have any categories yet. This might be a new store for you. And if that's the case, you can create a category right from this page here. You can create parent categories and subcategories. These categories can also be created from the categories menu on the left, but they can also be created here as well. Now you can rearrange these categories and um, you can always add categories later and then reassign products to those categories that you did create later. But let's keep going. I know this video is going to be a little bit detailed, but I just want you to understand what all these fields mean. Now we're into the pricing section, and the pricing section is what you are going to charge for your product. The very first is the price. This is what you would charge for the product. So for example, we might charge 20 USD, which is United States dollars. I'm based in the US. Now, if you want to change the default currency that your store is in, we recommend doing that first thing. And you can do that by going to your settings and then scrolling down to um, right here, currencies right here. Okay. Now your compare at price is basically an optional uh, thing that you can change, but it should typically be higher than your price. For example, if our compare at price is 25, but the price is 20, your store is going to show that it's on sale. So an easy way to understand what this is, is to think of this as the regular price, and this is your current active sales price. Um, once again, this is not required, but this is what the compare at price is for. And then you have the option to include your cost. Now, why would you want to include your cost? Well, because eventually LaunchCart will be able to tell you how much profit you're making per product and per sale based on your cost. So it's nice to give us this data so uh, the launch cart system can then give you back the data you need to see what your earnings are based on what your costs were. These two fields are optional um, and it's up to you if you want to fill them out. And you can always edit any one of these fields later. So just because you miss fields right now, that doesn't mean you can't come back at a later date and re-add them. Okay, the last option on this pricing section is to enable tax calculations. Now, if we check this box, it means that this product will be enabled 
for tax calculations, but it doesn't mean that it is actually going to be um, charging tax because in order for it to charge tax, you have to set up what are called custom tax rules. And you can do that later. Um, if you have custom tax rules enabled uh, and turned on, but this box is unchecked, then this product will never calculate sales tax when somebody checks out, regardless of where or how they're buying it. Um, so you want to make sure that if you are charging taxes for all your products or for some of your products, this needs to be enabled. Okay. And we do have videos on how to create custom tax rules. Now, on the right-hand side, let's go down these options right here. You have your product type. Once again, these are all optional, but they allow you to select what type of um, product these are. Now, these will allow your users, uh, they might see these. So certain themes might show some of these options available on your public store. They might allow your users to search based on product types. So assigning a product to a product type would be very useful. Once again, these are all optional, but in this example, let me just, uh, I'm gonna add some text here because this is a required field. I'm gonna put really cool shoes. And of course I would type in a lot more data in here if I was really selling this product. Um, but this is a shoes product. I'm going to assign it to the men's category. Uh, I might wanna create a secondary category called shoes uh, for shoes only. And I'm going to assign it to the men's parent category, which will make it a subcategory. And now you'll see that it's men's and there's another shoes category down here. Let's select that. Uh, for here, I'm going to type in the word shoes and I'm going to click right here. And now we have a new shoes product type, the vendor. I can select from an available vendor that might already be in my store or I can create my own vendor. So, um, you know, I could say this is myself. I'm, I'm, you know, the vendor myself or the name of your company. If this is your own product, you might put the name of your company. Of course, you would replace this with the actual name of your company. Um, and then you might put a tag in here. So you might put in shoes, you might put in footwear. And I'm just typing in the word and then pressing enter. Um, you might put in feet. Um, anything that relates to this product you might put in here. We recommend, you know, two to five tags, but it's totally up to you. And these are all optional fields. Now, as we continue to go down the page, one of the most important aspects is the media section. This is where you're going to upload images of your product. So here we have a whole bunch of products here. I can simply select on one of these and I can upload it right here. And now my product now has images and I can continue to add uh, images. I can also add videos here and I can also add um, OBJ files, which are 3D rendering files. And you can also insert YouTube videos by pasting in a YouTube link. So any media will be added here. Now, as we continue to go down, the next option we have is the ability for you to track inventory. If you want the launch cart system to keep track of the inventory when this product gets sold, you can enable this and you could tell the system how many you have currently in inventory. Maybe you only have 10 pairs of shoes that you're selling. You put 10 here and then you have some options as to what happens next. Do you want to continue selling this product when it's out of stock? If you click this button, Visitors will still be able to purchase this product from your store if the product is out of stock. If you select this option here, this says stop selling this product and allow visitors to get notified via email when back in stock. So your visitors will not be able to purchase, but they will be able to subscribe for email updates when this number increases at a later date. And then the third option is to either stop selling this product and do not allow visitors to get notified. So choose one of the options for this product and the system will do the rest. You don't really need to worry about anything other than updating this quantity as you get more quantity in the future. Okay, as we go down to the bottom, we have our shipping section. So for some of those uh, people that are using LaunchCart, you might be physically shipping out products to your customers. And if that's the case, you definitely wanna check this box. And you can also add in the optional weight and the units of weight. So if this weighs one pound, you would select one and then you put pounds over here. If this weighs, let's say uh, 90 ounces, you put 90 and you would choose ounces here. 
Now, once again, this is kind of similar to the tax section where you first need to tell LaunchCart that this is a physical product and that we should be calculating shipping, but it's not going to calculate shipping until you create a custom shipping rule and a custom shipping rate. We have videos on that um, and you would do that under settings, shipping. Now, once again, you can do that later. I always tell people, just fill this page out as best as you can. You can always add your tax rules and your shipping rules in later. Okay, if this is a digital product and maybe there is no shipping required, then leave this box unchecked and you'll be fine. This basically just tells the system if when a user or a customer checks out on your store, should it be calculating shipping costs or not? If it's unchecked, there'll be no shipping cost for just this product. If it is checked, it will see if there's a shipping rule. And if there's a shipping rule, it will apply that rule and that shipping rate. Okay. Now, I don't want to confuse you. It's actually all very simple, but uh, e-commerce can get a little complex. And I'm just walking you through all the different options you have here. Now, as we scroll down, we have variants. Now, variants comes in handy when you're selling the same type of product, but just in different ways. So let me explain. Let's say you're selling shoes, like in this example, but you have different sizes and you have different colors. So we might create a size variant. And let's say we have small, medium, and large shoes. This is what you would do. You would simply put in all your different values here. And let's say you have another option for color. Well, we'd add the word color here, and then we put in our color values. We might have white sneakers, brown sneakers, and black sneakers. Okay, once you do that, you might be done. Now, what happened is, is it just created a table right below here, and here's the table right below, and you can see this very big, long table, and we have a small white shoe, and there's a whole bunch of different values you can input for each one of these, okay? Now, this is all optional. You don't need to um, change any of this data down here, but uh, the more changes you make, the more specific your store will become. For example, you might need to upload a particular image for your, your white shoes. Um, there's also brown shoes here. You might upload a different thumbnail for all of your brown shoes, and you can do that by clicking here on this edit icon and uploading a new image. And then as we scroll down here is your black versions. Now, we do have other options here. I'm gonna walk through these pretty fast. We have the ability to add digital downloads to your product. You can do that here. Maybe you're selling a zip file, maybe you're selling a downloadable image, maybe you're selling um, some type of digital download. Well, if you wanna upload those, you can do those here. Now, if we scroll over, if you were shipping these products out, you would, of course, add the weight for all of them. You can also manage the inventory amount for each individual variant here by increasing these or lowering these. Now, LaunchCart will automatically change these values when the item is sold. So, for example, if you sell five of your medium white sneakers right here, this number will automatically change to five next time you come back here to edit it. So this is being handled by the system. You can also select your individual inventory settings. Um, and you have all the same pricing options as before, but now it's for each particular variant. So that's how variants work. Now I'm gonna turn off the variants because for this product, it's not really needed. I'm just gonna delete these and start over. So there we go, we've deleted them. They're no longer available. Now we just are selling one single product which is our shoes product. So let's go back down here. Now, the next option we have is product variants. Now, I'm going to skip this for now, but this allows you to add um, additional options for your users when they're checking out. There'll be a whole nother video and help article just on this feature. This is a pretty advanced feature, and it's really not needed for this video. Okay, so as we scroll down, here is another digital downloads box. However, um, this only appears if you don't have variants. When you have the variants turned on here, this box disappears, okay? Um, but since I deleted the variants, it came back. So once again, same thing, you can upload a whole bunch of different file types. You can see those here, Word documents, C, uh, CSV documents, PDFs, zip files, audio files, and so on and so on. And these would be delivered to your customers when they purchase this product, okay? At the very bottom of the list, and the last option we have is the ability for you to customize your product's SEO, your search engine optimization information. 
So here's what it comes with um, by default. It takes your page title and your description. You have the ability to customize this. You can put in a custom page title for the search engines and a custom meta description for the search engines. You can also change the URL structure for this page. Now, once you edit all these variables, you just simply hit save and you are done. Now, you do, you do want to make sure that when you save this product, here it is, it shows up in your products list, and you want to look at your status here. Is it active? If it is not active, then it's not going to be live on your store, and it's not going to be able to be purchased by your visitors. So you always want to make sure that your status is active. Now, you can always come back and you can click on the pencil icon to re-edit it. So it'll take you to the same page. Everything will be as is when you left off. And you can always add or remove information from this page at any time. So the best thing to do is to um, basically go through all the forms, fill out as much information as you can. If you need more time, you can always come back and re-edit it. If you don't want it to be live on your site while you are doing your edits, just change it to draft and then go ahead and re-save it. And then what happens, it's going to show up in your drafts section here underneath products and these are all products that are in draft mode but they're not live on your site but you can still edit them and change them and uh, do everything else so that is how simple it is to create a product for your launch cart store this product is now available to be sold on your store if you if you click on the eye icon that's an eyeball if you click on that icon it will open up this page and you can view this product in your store. You can also copy that URL that it goes to and send it out to anybody in the world and they can purchase this product from you. So I hope this video helped. If you have any questions, let us know. But here's to more sales. I'll see you on the next video.